what is going on guys welcome back to another swift video in today's video we're going to be learning how to use a ui collection view controller so basically what you see here it's a view controller that can manage a collection view hence the name and a collection view is this uh, grid like component of different cells so we'll take a look at how to put this together fully programmatically uh, if you're into that, if you're excited for it, make sure you start by hitting the like button, hit subscribe to stay up to date with daily Swift and iOS content. That all said, without any further ado, let's fire up Xcode and talk about some collection view controllers. Quick pause before the video. This video is brought to you by iosacademy.io. Head on over to check out the newly launched TikTok and Swift UI courses. Learn to build world-class professional apps in a fraction of the time, quickly and efficiently. That said, let's get back to the video. All right, we're going to begin by opening up Xcode and creating a new project here. We're going to stick with the app template under iOS, and we're going to call this project Collection View VC. Make sure your language is Swift and your lifecycle is UI Kit. Go ahead and continue. Save it wherever you'd like. And the first thing we're going to go ahead and do is expand our Xcode window here. I'm going to close this right panel. We're going to be working in viewcontroller.swift here. So we're going to open this up and I'm also going to go ahead and hit the play button at the top left to build our project and get it loading uh, into our simulator right over here. So cool. The next thing we want to actually do is of course create our UI collection view controller. So we need to create a new file and subclass it. So what I want to do is we're going to right click this and hit new file. We're going to select a Cocoa Touch class. And we first want to change this guy down here uh, to be a UI collection view controller. And up here, we're just going to give the actual file name, the class name, a prefix of, uh, let's go ahead and say grid collection view controller. So it's a little more specific. Make sure your language is Swift there. Go ahead and continue, and you'll get this file added. Now you're gonna notice that there are a ton of comments in here, so we are gonna delete all the comments. Uh, make sure you leave these three functions here that are already kind of stubbed out. But other than that, we're gonna get rid of that. I'm also gonna get rid of all of this junk right here because we're gonna type it out as we need it. And let's go ahead and see. Let's also get rid of this stuff here as well as this comment here and all these line breaks, just like that. So here we can see that uh, it created a view controller for us. It has a view did load, which should look familiar. Now in this view did load by default, it's basically registering a basic UI collection view cell to the collection view. And this self.collection view is essentially a property that the UI collection view controller gives you. Uh, and it basically is the collection view that is managed by this controller. We can actually get rid of self dot here. Uh, up here, it also has a reuse identifier uh, that it's using down below. So it's using that identifier to register uh, the cell. And then right below that, by default, we don't need to actually add the conforming protocols for the collection view data source or delegates. It actually is already built in to this UI collection view controller class. So we have the respective functions. So we have number of sections, which is actually an optional function. So we can actually get rid of this if I'm not mistaken. Then we have the number of rows in a given section. It gives you this warning that it's incomplete. Let's go ahead and let's uh, go ahead and make it, let's say uh, 12. And then this function here actually goes and dequeues a cell uh, for the given uh, reuse identifier, which is once again defined up here as a string of just cell, and then it returns the cell. So we're going to actually create and uh, present this view controller from our primary controller here. So when we boot up the app, we want to have a button. We're going to tap it and present that new controller we just made. So back in view controller, let's go ahead and create a button in here. And we're just going to create a pretty simple button with a CG rect. 0, 0, 220, and 50. We're going to go ahead and add a sub view of a button. We're going to also give it a nice background color of system blue. Let's also say button.center is view.center, so the button is centered. We also want to give it a title. I'm going to say 
uh, title is show collection for the normal states. And let's see, we of course want something to happen when we tap on the button. So we want to go ahead and add a target to it for a uh, target of self, a selector of did tap button and an event of touch up inside. Now we want to declare this uh, uh, function right here for this button tap, which is did tap button. And all we want to do in here is create an instance of that new controller we made, which is our grid collection view controller, just like that. And we are going to say present this controller animated true. So let's go ahead and hit command R to build and run. And we should see a blue button here in the center. We're gonna tap on this and we should see something happen. Right now, in fact, nothing is happening and our app actually crashed. So let's actually see what the problem is. So it's actually saying that the UI collection view uh, must be initialized with a non-nil layout parameter. So this is an interesting learning moment. So let's go back to our code here. I hit that pause button. When we actually create this controller, uh, if you take a look, it gives us an option to pass in a collection view layout. Now the layout in a collection view controls basically what it sounds like, how the cells are gonna lay out, right, the grid. So there is a layout that Apple provides that's built in and it's called a flow layout. So I'm gonna create it right up above and assign it to this constant of layouts. So we're gonna say this is a UI collection view flow layout, just like that. And now if you go ahead and hit command R one more time and you tap on this, you'll notice that we actually now don't crash uh, but we do in fact do see our, uh, our actual uh, new controller pop up. Now we've got still a couple issues. Of course, it's just showing a black screen, which is not very helpful. So let's go back to our grid collection view controller. We're gonna set a background color to our uh, collection view here. And I'm gonna say it is the system background, which is going to be white in light mode and black in dark mode. We are also gonna set a background color to this cell so we can actually see something. We're gonna say it's background is system green perhaps. And we're gonna hit run one more time. Now when we go and tap on this, what you'll see is our cells here are showing up. We said number of uh, items is gonna be 12. So we should have 12 of these square cells, which in fact we do. And we also see that our uh, background color matches the theme background color. So since we're in light mode, it is white. So cool. So let's take a look at some customization here. So if we go back to the view controller where we define this layout, on the layout, we can actually define the size of each of these cells. So right now it's just using whatever the default is. I believe it's 44 by 44. But what we could say in here is we can define rather a uh, item size, which is a CG size with a width and a height. So I could say each of these are 150 by 150. And if you go ahead and give it a run, now you'll see that these squares are much larger. And the reason we only have two columns now is because we couldn't fit a third uh, you know, in between here without things overlapping. So if we did wanna have three side by side, what we could do is we could pass in view.frame.size.width divided by three same thing for the height, so it's a square. And we can even control the spacing between the cells. So we can say, uh, let's say the line spacing is one. And we can also say the inter item spacing is one. And actually we'll need to go ahead and uh, from this divided by three calculation here, we'll need to subtract, I believe three. So we can give a little bit of margin between every cell. Let's go and put that there. Go ahead and give it a run, hit Command R. And we should have three columns now, just like that. So looking pretty cool. So let's talk about some more stuff. So on this layout, we can also specify things uh, like the scroll direction, which by default is vertical. We can also specify the section insets. Now, what is section insets? That is the uh, padding, you can think of it as between the edges of this actual collection view section. So right now these cells are flush to the edges of the screen, which does not look too great. So we're going to go ahead and assign this and it takes a uh, top, left, bottom, and right. And I'm just going to say it's one 
all the way around just like that. So looking pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit the button again. And now we have a little bit of space between the left top and right. It's very subtle, a little hard to see, but it's definitely there. And the final thing we're gonna talk about is, what if I wanted a title up here with a navigation bar? Um, so we would basically need to nest this grid collection view view controller inside of a navigation controller. So let me go ahead and organize our code a little bit. So here we are creating our layouts. Here we are creating our collection view controller. And then what we wanna do is we wanna actually uh, set this collection view controller uh, to be the root of a navigation controller. So I'm gonna say navigation VC uh, for view controller is a UI navigation controller. Uh, let's see, navigation controller, just like that. And we want the initializer that takes a single parameter of root view controller and pass in VC. And now instead of presenting VC, we are going to present nav VC. I'm also going to set a title on VC, which is our grid controller. And I'm going to call this collection view controller, or you could actually even call it something like grid controller, just like that. And we're also gonna want that nice uh, large title. So I'm gonna say, uh, let's see, we wanna on this controller define uh, that it's capable of the large title. Uh, so we want, let's see, large, prefers large title equal to true. And on the view controller here, we're gonna say VC navigation item, and we're gonna say large title display mode is always. Let me go ahead and add a comment here for navigation VC. And the last thing we're doing here is we're actually presenting view controller. Go ahead and give it another run, hitting command R to build. We should not have any errors. And when I go and tap on this now, you'll see that we have this really nice title up here, which is grid controller. It's the large title style of the title, which is uh, basically what we're setting up in our code right here. And then we have embedded our collection view controller inside of it. Now we took a look in our collection view controller subclass, uh, Xcode actually stubbed out a lot of the work for us with these two required functions, and it even registered a cell for us. Now we could register custom cells. I've got separate videos on that, but the last thing I wanna leave you with is, we wanna be able to get uh, the event when a user taps on one of these cells, presumably we wanna do something. And the way we can do that is by using one of the collection view delegate functions. And the UI collection view controller is already conforming to those protocols like we saw earlier. So we are just going to implement did select uh, item at index path. And it'll actually be an override if I'm not mistaken. Yep, override. And the first thing we want to do in here is, you know, just deselect that item, which unhighlights it, passing in the index path and true for the animation. And I'm just going to go ahead and print out uh, index path dot row and we're going to actually put it in a string and we're going to say did tap cell at position and I'm just going to stick in the index path dot row which should be the enumerated value of the cell so enumeration starts at zero so here this first one should be zero and this last one should be 11 so there it is in your console did tap cell at position zero and position 11. So of course in your app, you would actually want it to do something like open up another screen or another controller, but that's the premise of a collection view controller. It's a view controller that manages a collection view, hence the name, pretty descriptive. Uh, you could create a collection view yourself and add it as a sub view, but if you really just want a simple controller to uh, control a collection view, you're pretty, you're pretty good to go just using this built-in component that uh, Apple provides. And it's super simple, super easy to get up and running fully programmatically. And that's it. That's all I've got for you guys. So if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit the like button if you found this video informative, if you learned something. Subscribe if you're new and you want to stay up to date with our daily Swift and iOS content here. And of course, comment any questions, concerns, video suggestions, or feedback down below. I love hearing from you guys. Thanks for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one.